All right, welcome back, everybody. Asap Grimm here, and this is the continuation of our second uh, Stellaris Chronicle. And I just started the countdown timer. We're in 2318 as the Commonwealth of Man, and we're trying to get our economy back under control. That's been... Uh, it's been a roller coaster ever since I took this area. I can't seem to get any stability. So what I've decided to do is to hold off on further terraforming and planet development until I can figure out what's going on here. I do suspect that right now this, because we're terraforming this planet, it, and I can't find anywhere where it tells me this specifically, but I think that it's reducing our output a lot. Upkeep. Yeah, I can't uh, can't seem to find where it would tell me that, but that's what I suspect. So anyway, we are going to hit unpause. Click up one. Strike Force Griffin is on its way to deal with this threat right here. At uh, Absaja. Absa Everybody's breaking agreements with the Sadrell Archive. We are getting close to having enough alloys to build a third fleet. However, right now, due to our energy deficit, I'm I'm leery. I'm I'm not really I'm reluctant to do that because they'll cost upkeep. But we're in a really bad spot. We just improved a little bit there. Now we got worse. See, I have, I just, right now, I have no idea, no clue whatsoever what's causing this to be so volatile. I, it has been up and down, up and down like an elevator ever since we took this area. Or, well, not ever since, but um, for the past episode or two, we've seen some really wild swings on this these credits. Science Division reports success. Okay. So, where the body fails, science intervenes. I'm not interested in psionic theory. Or gene clinics. This is the lowest ranking one. I guess maybe I'll grab that right now. I don't really need anything else on here. Okay, what else can we do? Corrigan's kind of stuck with what it's got going. Thebes, same deal. I could maybe move those pops. Right here we have room to build, but uh, I don't want to do anything until the terraforming's done. Tethys, I'm trying to build generator districts right now. So maybe I can move some people over. Um, from Corrigan. And from Thebes. down to neg 29 here and we've we've built one generator so that's what caused that jump okay i think thebes is going to be what kind of gets us back to steady eddie for a minute but we are still man i don't like this volatility i i, I more so i guess it's more accurate to say i don't like that i don't understand what's causing the volatility See, we just back. Look at this, man. What in the world is causing the drain? 
ships, stations, star bases, buildings, districts, jobs, pops. Pops is at 49. Maybe that's what's changing. We just went to neg 33. Neg 34. What is the number that's changing here? I don't see it. Our production went up because we just finished another generator. Fleet action underway. Okay. You can RTB. Finally into the green again. Science division report success. Ion thruster has been researched. Uh, twelve, twelve, six, forty-eight. Railguns is tempting. I'm going to grab this one. Holographic casts. Did I read what I just learned? These electric thrusters use beams of ions to generate thrust without the need for propellant. Wow. Coil guns are more powerful versions of the early mass drivers. We did read that. We read all this. Okay. Science Division reports a new breakthrough. Man, I like this game. Cold fusion power, the ability to sustain a fusion reaction of relatively low temperatures, will result in a new generation of fusion reactors for our ships. Let's take the hyperdrive. We're going to be guns and lasers, so I'm not too worried about the plasma. That pops number has not changed. And I, I'm not spotting the number that is changing. Hmm. Battle debris secured. All right. Several merchant ships passing in the vicinity of Absajamen 1 have independently of each other reported anomalous readings coming from the direction of the planet. After studying these readings, experts on Unity believe they may be indicative of ancient precursor activity. Okay, so... Energy surplus, a combination of favorable weather conditions on one of Naflaveth's largest continents, and the dedication of our workers has allowed the Planetary Energy Company to overshoot its production targets. As a result, we have a sizable energy surplus from Naflaveth, plus 33%. That's nice. You are currently surveying debris, and you are assisting research. Okay. Now, what else was there that I wanted to check over here? Okay. Where's this at? Outside. Outside of our space. Alien specimen procurement. 
This is also outside our space. Okay, so I, I just wanted to make sure there was nothing else that we could really take a look at. All right, unpause. Camelot is almost done colonizing. How is Naflaveth looking? About halfway done? Yeah. Battle debris secured. Excellent. Special Research project this project. Complete. Let us watch but not interfere with it. Research that and research that. Get these checked off. Okay, let's go into, from here, I like to go Prosperity. Mining station output has increased 10%. All right, hopefully this tree will help us balance this economy. I look, we're up to plus 32 again. Man, I, I really wish I could, maybe I needed to start tracking those numbers earlier. Um, but uh, a lot of that's coming from what happened with Naflaveth, with the the bonus that we got. Let's um, upgrade you and uh, upgrade you. This shipyard I want to convert into a defense station. Fleet Academy. Ship starting experience. Oh, okay, so that would be nice for some place that is a, a dock. That that. What am I trying to think of? A shipyard. But for a defense station, I am instead gonna put up this disruption field generator. Which I think, because we're protecting against this L gate. So I think that's more important than the reduced speed. So we'll go with that. Then looking at Deneb, maybe I can convert resource sales, crew quarters, off world trading, war memorial. So I can't make those. Yeah, that was made by the other species that was here. I haven't researched that tech yet. Okay. That's all right. That's all right. I'll stick with that, with my plan. Ships refitted. Ships refitted. Ships refitted. We have claimed a new world. Okay, Ships we refitted. just... Uh... Ships well, we're refitted. up to plus 51 now. Ships refitted. Ships refitted. Okay, we Ships learned about refitted. frequency tuning. Gang ambush on Unity. One of the gangs on Unity recently launched a concerted attack on law enforcement officers all over the moon. At a given hour, gang members ambushed patrolling enforcers while several precincts were completely overrun. The intense fighting has left thousands dead. Thousands? Wow. Our remaining security forces are struggling to regain control, but for the time being, many regions of the moon have descended into utter lawfulness. Oh, one of our enforcer pops died. Wow. Wow. So that uh, represents, that one pop represents like a million or a thousand or 10,000, 100,000 units, you know. 
Stellaris doesn't really tell you. It's left up to you to kind of imagine. But these uh, these Special planets complete. these planets hold seventy five pops, right? And it's it's not seventy five people. It's it's more likely like seven point five million. A thorough investigation has unearthed evidence of a past U presence, and a way team from the CNS Arbiter has managed to bring a relatively well-preserved artifact back to the ship, which should hopefully increase our knowledge of this ancient civilization. Okay. And we found the home system. Our, after intense study of our recovered Ute artifacts, scientists on Unity have managed to deduce the exact galactic coordinates of Utah. The home system of the ancient Ute civilization. We should launch an expedition in this system before someone else beats us to it. Okay, where is it? Right here. Military readiness. Special project complete. Uh, let's take the void loops. All right, Thebes. Uh, let's see, Dawn Light. Ships refitted. Agricultural district. This was going to be an industrial world, I believe. Go with that. I'm still, I, I waffle. This is something I've not really studied long enough to think over. I have a general idea, but I I am not sure which worlds I should be using for their resources here and which ones I should be focusing on using these slots to specialize them, you know? I mean, I could probably mine this world for some decent minerals and agriculture, but it doesn't have any bonuses. Uh, I think I'll just stick with my plan. I'm probably, that's probably, maybe I'm thinking too much about that, like overthinking it. Is this done? No. Order has been restored. Ships refitted. Science Division report success. Ah. Uh. These massive entertainment complexes is where dreams come come true. Shopping malls, restaurants, amusement parks, virtual arcades, and more. You dream it, we are it. Hyper entertainment forums. Alrighty then. Um, atmospheric filtering probably. Yes. We'll grab that. Plus 5% habitability. Uh, 
We're at plus 63 here. Now Flaveth is still um, terraforming. So this must be helping a lot, but this isn't the only thing that's going on. Man, I wish I understood better, more accurately, exactly how this works. Produced 752. All right. The Ute homeworld. We have confirmed that Ute-10 Majoris was the original homeworld of the Ute. The planet suffered extensive orbital bombardment roughly 4 million years ago. Twisted metal skeletons are all that remain of the massive arcologies that once covered the surface. From what we can piece together, it seems the Ute spent the better part of a million years searching local space in vain for signs of intelligent alien life. When they finally encountered the Jabardini, a young race that had only recently achieved interstellar travel, their alien psychology was a tremendous shock. The Ute leadership reached a consensus. The Jabardini had to be eradicated before they grew too powerful. A massive surprise attack was launched, which was beaten back at great cost for both sides. Despite their young age, the Jabardini were already experimenting with technologies the Ute had never considered, and eventually they gained the upper hand. After less than a decade of warfare, the two million year old Ute Empire was utterly destroyed. Wow. Relic found Ute Cryocore. Unity, energy, credits, minerals, minor artifact action unlocked secrets of the Ute. Science Division reports a new breakthrough. All right. Solid holographic casts can alter their shapes at a moment's notice. Uh, speeding up alloy production. Nice. 1616. Oh, we can get the nano circuit assembly. We also can get this. That's a good one, also. Oh, no. Zero G refineries is first on the list. Yep. We're going to grab that. Alrighty then. This is their world. Broken world. Ute home world. No valid world to terraform to. This planet is not within our borders. Oh, okay. Anomaly found. Research it. Love's labor lost. Having decrypted the signal, Yu Luo was astonished to discover it was broadcasting in an archaic form of one of the main human languages. Speaking in these thous and whence forth, it appears to be reciting one of the lost works of William Shakespeare, a renowned human playwright who lived some 600 years ago. It appears that the broadcasting device, a simple satellite dish protected by a small shelter, is the only non-natural structure on, moon, on, on the moon. There is uh, no hint as to who left it there or why, but going by the wear and tear on evidence, it must have been there since shortly after the play was first written. Long before humans learned the secret of space travel, we can only assume it was left there by ancient visitors to Earth who took a liking to the play and decided to pay our species a strange and unexpected tribute. Abhorrent suppresses nonsense about alien visitations. 
I, I like to go with this one. We're not really scared that there's aliens that exist. We're more offended by it. <laughs> Superiority reaffirmed. Unity and happiness. Modifiers. Enemy contact. Pirates have been sighted and they must be dealt with. You've decided to declare rivalry upon us. This is the Send Consumer Products. That was a terrible decision on your part. We will return the favor. Okay. Where are these pirates at? They are nearby. Strike Force Griffin deploy. Okay. We're starting to get close to being balanced out on our consumer goods. Our credit system, our situation seems... Oh, look at that. It went from plus 63 to plus 10. I, I think the production is different. Let's see if that modifier went away over here. Where are you, Nephleveth? No, it's still there. What in the world, man? We have martial law affected here. Uh, we don't have, we can lift that. End martial law. System okay. reconnaissance completed. Planet production should go back up as a result. Maybe that's what was giving me the problem. I think that's what it was instead of the terraforming. Here's our boys. Oh, that was fast. Okay. You can RTB. The science ship can come and research this project. And this construction ship can build an outpost. Okay. Ah, look, we're green here again plus nine I mean that's really the wrong economic term we're in the black I guess would be the right economic term but I don't I'm not I've never been strong on economies and stuff I have I understand basic concepts but you start getting into math terms and accounting stuff and I'm like yeah, I'm not interested <laughs> um, let's see All right, well, what this means, I think I am ready to risk building this fleet. Okay, we're not quite there yet. We need 6,100, call it 6,200. Construction complete. All right, let's look at... Look at our planets and see what we can do, if anything. We have three unemployed here. We maybe need to be moving populations around. Four unemployed right here. With no districts left, but we can... Start updating these. The thing is, is, um... Well, our economy should be able to support... This always makes me nervous, because this we are going to have to start buying... rare materials we're at a plus three right now plus 10 on rare crystals that's pretty good but these are going to take moats so let's upgrade one wait a minute currently this employs two but we're going to gain three so upgrade two of them All right. The timer just went off. All right. And Thebes will probably push everything towards city 
eventually to support jobs here for the alloy found uh, forges. So we're going to upgrade both of those. That was a uh, that was Thebes. Naflaveth is almost done terraforming about 500 more days and we do not have any unemployed here right now let me look here Are, do we have robots robot harvester robot miners and robot farmers okay so we're good to go there we don't have any humans doing that tethys we're beginning to put some generator districts up to help. Uh, we do have one unemployed. Let's go ahead and put up another research center. Okay, now over at Unity, I'm going to take the extraordinary jump and replace these with admin buildings, which is retarded. I know it. I'm just, I want to do it. I want to see how being admin balanced affects our empire. And um, and I want to get planets situated the way that they're supposed to be. Okay, so that means that Tethys, where are you at? That means that I'm going to want to bring uh, my science vessel, this one right here, to assist research over here. Okay. Thebes, we can resettle somebody from Corrigan. That'll make uh, an even six unemployed, which will fill up both of those advanced alloy forges that we're making. All right, let's hit save. All right, again, I'm Aesop Grimm. Um, I don't think I'm playing the game really well, but I do think I'm playing it better than I did before. Uh, for example, I was watching a, uh, what's his name? Stefan Anon, I think is his name. Stefan, like it rhymes. I, I want to say it's Stefan Anon, but I'm not for sure. Anyway, he was talking, he's a big tech guy, and he was saying he want, he believes you should be at plus 500 technology, no later. Like that should be your minimum. Plus 500 in, in science research, 50 years in. Well, I'm way farther than that, and I'm not at 500 yet. So it, it makes me think that I'm, I'm probably doing things in a very much non-optimal way, but I'm still having fun, and I'm advancing, and it, it feels like an, an organic advancement to me, like I'm learning from my own experiences and stuff. So we'll see how that continues to go. We're in the year 2323. I think 2375 is where I cut my last playthrough with the UNE off. So we'll find out where this heads, but I am having a lot of fun doing this, and I, I hope that it's been enjoyable to watch. Anyway, I will see you in the next episode where this story continues. Thanks for visiting Aesop Grimm's Chronicles. If you've made it this far in the video, please consider rating, commenting, subscribing, and sharing. I hope to see you in the next episode, and until then, stay shiny.